103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Hello and digital welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio, Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, December 19th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I can't cop the hair from coming out. It keeps coming out. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, if you can't stop it, let me know. We'll make a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And our guests today are uh, Boudreaux from Eastern Kentucky, or from Kentucky. Hello, Boudreaux. I haven't seen you in a while. Hey. George Brown, uh, two and a half, formerly from Brooklyn. Hello. Hello. Dread Pirate Higgs. Ah, Canada. From the great white north. <laughs> That's right. And Lee John Richards from across the pond. Hello. 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 Uh, and we have a new guest, Sky from Texas. Welcome to the show, Sky. Thank you. Hello. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in town, well, I'm swear you're just not. In Knoxville, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and we're a small Tennessee town. Larry, there's no swearing allowed. We just had a conversation about this. You just said you swear or we're not. Oh, we're not alone. <laughs> this is radio, but I can use the word swear, I'm sure. Uh, we'll tell you more about the Atheist Society of Knoxville after the mid show break. Well, Matt, what are we going to be talking about today? It's We're going to be Christmas talking about week, the story. So it has to be about Christmas, I bet. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's the story of Christmas that we're talking about today. And we're going to get into some meat and potatoes. I would like to make some comments. We got a new person in, and we're almost near Brady Bunch capacity in terms of our layout. Yeah. But I, did, I did want to give out some highlight and some awesome comments. First of all, John Richards, I see you've upgraded the, ca the castle in your background. Very nice. I think that's a keeper. That looks pretty good. Dig. I'm, I've promoted myself to Lord. <laughs> <laughs> very, nice. very very nice uh Boudreaux, it's also really really nice to have you on the show as well uh it's been a while but so hey, you're Boudreaux. always welcome mm -hmm. on george sure. looking good you're looking light you must have lost weight buddy and and sky i'd love to get into your backstory but before we get into all of that i'd like to throw it up to our own dread pirate higgs for our weekly invocation all right Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Ramen. You know, Dred, I've actually found some noodles that are carb, more or less carb. I don't want to say they're carb free, but they're at least low, super low in calories. They're konjac noodles. I just got them on Amazon and like a whole pack, it's only five calories. That's going to blow my mind. I'll let you know how they wow. turn out. I know it's insane, right? They also make rice. That's like a pound is only like five grams uh, or five calories. It's like, how, how is this possible? It's insane, but I am going to be getting you some highly caloric fruity pebbles in the mail. Be ready for that, Dred. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> Guys, we have a new guest. I'd like to throw it up to Sky. Sky, tell us about yourself and what's your Christmas situation like. Okay. Uh, I am an atheist. I was raised in an atheist household. Um, my Christmas situation is that I love secular Christmas. Hmm. Um, I love all the grand old pagan traditions. Uh, unfortunately we will not be having Christmas this year because my mother is still afraid of COVID. So the family won't be getting together. Ah, uh, that's, no, well, no. that's interesting for you. Christmas is being with your family, like, because that's why you aren't having Christmas, right? Yeah. Um, I get that. My, my, athe my atheist grandparents always threw big, to do's for Christmas, and it was the whole family. We got like twenty people there. Wow, wow, wow! Yeah, COVID's put a sore stir. Boudreaux, what's your Christmas situation like? <clears throat> well, uh, I have kids, so um, Christmas is a big deal for us, and it's fun, and you know, it's very secular. 
Um, but we do tree and presents and we'll do, we'll visit with, um, Kristen's parents and uh, her sister there in town. So it'll be a small gathering. Um, and we're not Kristen's looking. parents are also atheists too, right? Um, Buffalo bill father is. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's, um, it's nice. Uh, uh, Christmas has always been a big deal for me as a kid too. Uh, we, my mom just spoiled us rotten as kids and that always made me just enjoy Christmas that much more. So a lot of presents under the tree for the kids. So not bad, not bad, not bad. Uh, for me, I had a, uh, uh, a Christmas birthday nearby. So you get the combination of the December, early December gifts and then the Christmas gifts. So it's a slow trickle yeah. and it's never anything big. So it's not a lot that you have to wait for. I kind of have like a nicotine patch in terms of getting presents throughout <laughs> December. Mm-hmm. John Richards, what's your Christmas situation? And how have you been, my friend? We, we do the traditional Christmas. You know, we've got a tree, flickering lights, presents underneath it. We will have a Christmas lunch. And then, we're, of course, we'll, we'll sit and listen to the Queen's message. <laughs> There's a Queen's <laughs> message every year? Is that, yes. is that a thing? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, but- uh, like state Canada. of the Union, state of the Christmas. Yeah, is that a state of the Union? <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's, it's more of a, it's, it's a non-political speech, obviously, and, and she's just reporting on the year and wishing all the members of the Commonwealth, because don't forget, we may not be an empire, but we still have a Commonwealth, and in fact, other countries have been voluntarily joining it, but she's, she just gives us all a nice, homely message. A nice little and, pat on the back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hear that um, in Abu Dhabi, Mm. For the first time, they're going to have a do. So will it be the Abu Dhabi do? (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Okay. All right. Dread, in Canada, do you also get a broadcast of the Queen's message as well? Is that, does it reach across the seas? No. Okay. Well, not, not not to this household anyway. Um, <laughs> no, we've been uh, slowly, uh, my wife and I have uh, just over the last few days been opening a gift uh, that we've given to each other one a day. Oh. Um, this morning after the show, I am leaving for the Great White North where I'll be working uh, for some wealthy people um, doing security. So it's a 5,000 acre ranch I'm heading up to. Uh, it's going to be pretty groovy. Now, is yeah. this for a movie? No, this is a different uh, different security outfit. Um, yeah, there's some familial issues that uh, they need uh, security detail for. Oh, um, this is very, very, very. Do we have to do it? It's very, very interesting. Very covert. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm, I'm actually going to be on a, a gator. I'll, I'll be armed um, because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, aside from any security issues, there's lots of cougars up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to have to be on my guard. But uh, yeah, it's a nine hour, nine, 10 hour drive um, I'll be undertaking today. So uh, cross your fingers for me and uh, we'll pray to the noodly Lord that I make it. Yeah. I did. I didn't know what kind of cougar he was referring to, but now it makes sense. <laughs> I, I was like, Oh, it is a reality TV show. Okay. Yeah. It's like, I did the ladies for me. Uh, you okay, watch out for funny. those predatory women. They like that. <laughs> He's armed and dangerous ladies. <laughs> it's true. George, would you mind giving me a fill in? How's your holiday season looking? Uh, very uneventful. I, I am <clears throat> in my armchair study of psychology. I confess um, that there is one Google service that I am addicted to. Uh-oh. Actually, one and a half. Okay. And the one service I'm addicted to is YouTube. Yeah. Because there's there's a lot of good information, mm-hmm. uh, armchair psychology information, and not such armchair. So good stuff coming out professionally. And a lot of people are hard to understand. Mm. Their, their sound is bad, mm. uh, YouTube presenters. So I am setting up a little hi-fi system to plug into my computer so that I can understand these people better. You know and, they have closed captions, right? You could just turn those on. Well, but, but the closed captions often are muffled themselves, you know? Okay. When the people are so hard to understand. 
I have you to know, boost the speech frequency. Yeah, I hate it when I have to turn up the volume on closed captions. They don't really don't make any noise at all. Do they? It's, a, it's a serious so problem. What I'm doing, what I'm, my task right now is that I am painting a pair of old Radio Shack's small speakers to use in this task. So that's that's my big my big confession. Right. I now. love the long term projects you're always on, George. It's always something. George, George, George. Go for it, John. Yeah. When, when you turn up the volume on the captions. <laughs> Like, do they go from lowercase to capital? <laughs> <laughs> well, the word um gets bigger. Ah, okay, okay, there we go. Guys, that was a great tangent. Larry, I can't, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on you. How's your Christmas holiday looking? Oh, it's just going to be a small family affair. Uh, we're really cooling off the big gatherings uh, due to COVID. Uh, it wouldn't right. be so bad, but we've got people who are saying that they're vaccinated when we know they're not. So, right. so yeah. we're just you know, that is yeah. not doing it. Listen, and, uh, you know, Sheila and I are 70 ish, so that's, that's a lot of problem. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to even mess with that. I'm in Tennessee. There's a lot of friends that mm -hmm. are having parties like around this time. And it's just like, I know for a fact that some of these people who are going to these or like the, at the, the proponents poster children of anti-vaxxing and I don't want to mm -hmm. hang out with them when I'm about to be on an extended break. Likewise, sure. uh, I don't want to bring the biome that I'm in in Tennessee out to my mom and, and she's in Virginia. And I know Tennessee is like the hotbed right now. So I'm just saying, mm -hmm. Hey, we'll do video. We'll give it one more year and I'm sure we'll catch up later on. Hey, what's up little girl. All right, guys, we're talking about the story of Christmas from an atheist perspective and sanity of Christmas from an atheist perspective. Uh, Larry, would you mind setting the tone or uh, well, one thing first is, uh, yeah. we said we were going to get back to sky after we did our introduction. Oh yeah. That's right. Bad. So, uh, sky, can you tell us a little bit about what, what it's like there in your corner of Texas, uh, for oh, an man. atheist? It's awkward. <laughs> yeah. um, San Antonio is a very Catholic city, mm. uh, a very churchy city. Also um, pretty liberal, though. It's a, it's a... Um, well, I don't know. I've I've lived other places, so I don't find it all that liberal. Oh, okay. Uh, but Austin is right up the road. Austin is okay. very liberal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Austin, Austin has a great atheist community. Yeah, yeah, they do. They yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the is up there. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a secular humanist oasis opening up there in January. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, if you run into Matt Dillahunty, say I said hi. Mm -hmm. I sure will. <laughs> but you won't know who I is. That's just the weirdest part. Though. Dread, dread pirate Higgs. He knows. Oh, okay. Me. Okay. 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 Matt, hey. Matt Dillahunty is in hospital having his heart operated on right now. Oh, is no. He? Really? Hmm. Well, oh, wish him well. Sending good vibes. Yeah. 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 Good thoughts, Absolutely. anyway. We have faith in doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not only faith, but also good, reliable science in it, too. Of course. I did want to make yeah. some, um, I did want to have some things to touch on. Uh, Sky, how long have you been in Texas? And then I guess, is it hard for you to admit that you're an atheist in, in that time, particularly in this holiday season? <laughs> No, it's not. Um, I realize that there is a lot of stigma sometimes attached to being an atheist. Mm. And I really like to let people know and to be a good role model to show them that you really can be good without God. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Sure. That's, the truth. that's really important to me. That's good. Uh, Dread, would you say, you know, as you're driving arm through the gators or uh, I'm sorry, through the cougars, right? Just knocking back left and right, left and right, left and right. <laughs> How are you doing it? Uh, do you feel in this holiday season, uh, any, or I know, and as a, as a possiferian, but also as an atheist at the same time too, like, do you feel any additional, um, pressure to, to, to keep yourself, you know, in the back burner while the Christians have their holiday and then, uh, give yourself more no. time to step forward. What do you think? Uh, no, I, it, you know, I'm a realtor. It was one of my professions. And, uh, and just recently they, um, they were going to, you know, they advertised a uh, virtual party, mm -hmm. a Christmas, a Christmas party. And it was heavy, heavy, Christ, uh, heavy Christian theme there. And, and, um, 
And then I just, I spoke up to my uh, managing broker and said, Hey, look, I'm one of the 69% of people who are not Christians. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, with all due respect, uh, it would probably be better all around for everyone. Um, if we did this as a secular, uh, secular holiday, uh, otherwise I, I'm just not interested in participating. And he was, he was really good. He, he came back and he says, you know what, you are absolutely right. Um, we, we ought to do this in a secular fashion because as you point out, 69% of people are not Christian. There's all mm-hmm. kinds of faith, faiths out there and we cannot assume, uh, our, our realtors are all of the Christian faith, even though they might celebrate Christmas and all that good stuff. So, yeah. So it was, a, it was nice that I, that I stood up and it was nice that he acknowledged that and, um, and made changes accordingly. So I was really appreciative. That's Very really cool. good. Good story. Yeah. Boudreaux, I'm going to throw a softball at you. You just, when I asked you what Christmas was, you know, I heard Sky talk about family, but I heard you only talk about presents. That just shows Christmas is getting way too capitalized. Well, we should get right back to our Christian roots on Christmas, right? Like, isn't that <laughs> the most important thing? And what's all this tree and pagan stuff that you got? Like, g- pull out a Bible, throw out a New Testament up there. Let's celebrate the true good story. I mean, what, what we need the tree because where else are you going to put the presents? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel I, like I, Christmas as it is, is if it moves towards more capitalist uh, centric than religious centric, is that an improvement in your book? I mean, I guess I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't feel like capitalism's replacing the the Christianity of it. Um, I think there are plenty of people that, you know, it's the only time of year they go to church and, um, you know, there, a lot of times you'll have a big gathering and that's when you say grace and, you know, uh, and I don't know the, the capitalist side, it's hard for me to, um, uh, think of that as bad. Cause again, I have just such warm memories as a kid of, of Christmas and, and, um, you know, we, 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 we try to uh, make it to where the kids just really, really look forward to it. Um, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times we'll try to make sure we get them practical gifts as well as cool, fun things too. So, you know, they're, they're getting you know, practical. Well, gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they, but if you mix them, if you mix them in, uh, you get the right practical gift, it could be really useful. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you, you get socks for Christmas, but you get yeah. cool socks with dinosaurs on yeah. them or something, you know, uh, yeah. anyway, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I, uh, is it too mm. capitalist? Uh, should we be maybe one of the things we did start and maybe this, uh, this is a, a better way to look at it. one of the things we did start this year um, is that we are going to every Christmas, make sure we um, go to givewell.org uh, oh. and, 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 and kind of do good there. And then we've got some local charities that we want to give to, but it's it, 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 there you go, Ty. That's, There's some that's giving it. back there. Yeah. Nice. So, nice. Nice. Reminder yeah. for the kids to give back a little bit in the community. Oh yeah. And, and definitely we involve the kids. They help pick the, um, um, the right, you know, the, the charities. And so, yeah, I'm, I'll transition to John Richards. Listen, Christmas was never secular. So the idea of a secular Christmas is an affront. It's an attack on Christmas. Wouldn't you agree? Isn't it obvious that if we have a secular Christmas, we are literally taking away the entire point of Christmas in the first place. And why are you as Lord of atheists <laughs> 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 laughing right now and agree you're in agreement with this, right? Like you're re- it's shows being recorded. We agree that we are attacking Christmas systematically each year. Why don't you, are we in agreement? Not at all. No, no. Well, I was, I was taught way back when I was at school that the pagan midwinter festival that we celebrated in the northern hemisphere since before the days of christ Hmm. i mean i think that um yule and saturnalia depending on which part of northern europe you you came from was a couple of hundred years pre-christ and what happened was the the romans commandeered most of europe and decided to adopt christianity as the state religion and then imposed it on our existing festivals. So they stole Saturnalia (laughs) for their their evil Christian purpose. (laughs) (laughs) So you're saying two rights make a wrong, we're just stealing it back, that's it? Is that what it is? 
And I'm saying I want it back. Give us uh, back. Give us back Saturnalia. Oh, give us yes. back just the pagan holiday. Let's just celebrate that. We may even have more fun with it. The songs yeah. might even be better. To well, be honest yeah. with you, I'm a little tired of that Celine Dion soundtrack over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, Dread? I was, was just going to. There was, there was all the good bits in Saturnalia. Oh. You know, oh yeah, the drinking, the eating, you the fire, the, the, the yeah, dancing, okay. the gifts. We yeah. didn't need any of that other nonsense. Yeah, get rid of it. <laughs> Dread, what's up? I, I was just going to say, if if anyone's looking for a, a, a good thing to donate on Christmas to, um, uh, Pastafarians uh, are involved in a thing called Kiva, and I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Kiva is a platform where uh, interest-free loans are made to uh, uh, persons in underdeveloped countries, um, wow. and Pastafarians have donated five million six hundred ninety-three thousand one hundred fifty dollars. So, if you want to be a part of that good thing, uh, just go to Kiva and Church of the Blind like Spaghetti that. Monster. Wowee, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, George, I know you were raised atheist. I know you consider yourself an organic atheist. I like to consider you an untainted, uh, not born again atheist. <laughs> <laughs> right? But hey, yes, what, but, you, <clears throat> but you grew up in New York. You saw the Rockefeller Center. Maybe you even saw that big tree. Like, could you tell me about the best, biggest Christmas event that you've been to? No, I can't. <laughs> Don't forget that I come from a Jewish heritage. I know. So, um, to me, I've been thinking about this today, which is why I proposed the subject, and, because the anomalies just come hot and heavy to me. I mean, how can I put this? Okay, first of all, this the, the occasion, what we all wrapped around is the death of a guy, right? Right. George, I guarantee okay. you, I guarantee you we'll go into the insanity of Christmas in the second half. But at least for now, when we got like a couple of minutes left, we'll keep it nice and happy. Tell me about your most positive Christmas experience. If it's as a Jew, I can totally respect it. It was like, ah, there wasn't anything. Oh, well, like, we okay, got a tree and I got a lot of presents, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know okay, cool. Was, mm -hmm. and, and the presents weren't cl clothing because I hated getting clothing. No, they weren't you know? dreidels or anything like that, right? Oh, God, <laughs> a dreidel, dreidel's ridiculous. You know, you see, you spin the dreidel, it spins around, it falls down, big Forget deal. About it. Yeah. You know, so what? But, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, for Hanukkah, think, would be Hanukkah be the better answer? Like, did you ever have a big Hanukkah celebration, even as an atheist? No, Jew? no, because I don't care about that either, you know. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. I thought that there was chocolate involved in the dreidel game. There somehow. sure is. Yeah, you. He no, there are chocolate. That's how they, they everyone wanted to play with them so they could have this chocolate. That's how it worked. No, they. Yeah. they, they, they uh, it's called Hanukkah gelt. Gelt means gold, right. and they're 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 coins that are they're like a, a, a heavy aluminum foil that is gold plated, and they're filled with chocolate and yeah. and they're. They're very, very thin. They're coin thickness. So there's a whole, not a whole hell of a lot of chocolate in them. Oh, and there's, not even a good it's bar. all just very frustrating because you've got to peel all this stuff off and there's hardly any. There. So I would say I'm, I'm down with anything involving chocolate. Yeah, there me you too. Go. There you Dark go. chocolate, especially. Dark chocolate, also good. Guys, we're going to go into the insanity of Christmas after the second half. I promise I would. <laughs> but before we do that, let's do a quick shake, uh, break before uh, we reach the top of the sure. half hour. All right, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now let's talk just for a second about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us now inside since it's winter at the high top table. We're usually the loudest and the happiest group there. <laughs> if you'd like to join our Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, <laughs> uh, you can email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. 
Repeat uh, that, can... Larry. <clears throat> no, it's oh. good. You can keep going, Larry. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. One back where you'd want to pick up. I was still trying to turn up the captions, so I'm sorry if I was some technical difficulties. I hope everyone now sees them all in caps lock mm-hmm. now. They should be as loud as they possibly can be. Guys, we're talking about the insanity <laughs> of Christmas. I, I, you know, over the show, we had, I'll, I'll admit, we had a little break to discuss mm-hmm. that with George, that Christmas is not about the death of a guy. And I think we're all on the same page. That's Easter, right? But yeah. you're the organic atheist <laughs> in the room, so I'm t- we're totally on the same level now. But it's very sweet. It's like that's that's the impression they can go through your entire life being like Easter and Christmas. They're basically the same thing, right? It's like I love it. I would love to have that kind of like non-indoctrinated mindset. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go with John Richards. Insanity of Christmas: things you can eat, what pudding, sausages. Those shouldn't be mixed together. What's going on here? <laughs> It's, it's because I'm worried about you guys. You've eaten all your turkeys at Thanksgiving, so I've got to provide some alternative menu for you, and I suggest toad in the hole. Now, to make toad in the hole... <laughs> <laughs> toad in the hole. All it, right. It's, it's a egg and uh, plain flour batter with a little milk to loosen it up. You put it in a pan full of hot fat, and then you lay your sausages in it, cook it for about 40 minutes in the oven. Delicious. Wow. It sounds like Toad sausage biscuits. Toad in the hole. Yep. Sausage mm-hmm. biscuits? Anyone? In Texas, no? we eat tamales. Oh, I oh. love tamales. Yeah, that's a good one. You yes, know, tamales. and the last Christmas I spent with my family, we just ordered pizza. And I think, you know, that just saved everybody because we didn't have to spend time cooking, more time with each other, and no leftovers because everybody loves pizza. You can get it any way you want. All right. I want to remind you that in, in Gene, Gene Shepard's Christmas story uh, um, uh, movie, they all go out for Chinese food. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you know. That, I love that. I love that film. That was There will most film. likely be one year where I won't have to hear the Peanuts theme or hear about that movie for at least one year. But it's not this year. But <laughs> thank you, George. <laughs> we'll mm-hmm. Check that off the list. But I haven't heard the Peanuts theme yet. So who knows? Who knows? Boudreaux, tell me about the insanity of Christmas. There's something about scenes that you want to talk about? Scenes, yeah, and I'm for the people that are watching this, uh, they'll get a little extra uh, bonus. But I'm going to attempt to to put a put a background on mine. Yeah, there you so. go. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> so, so seriously, there 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 is a company that makes a nativity scene for like a lawn ornament, and it's this bright white thing. People usually take a light and shine it on it, and uh, and two of my neighbors have it. There are dozens on in the neighborhood. Uh, down the street, all kind of the same. They seem to be the same manufacturer. Um, And I don't know if someone who worked for them just got in there and got a little creative with the, with with the, the design, or maybe my brain has just mapped this uh, uh, so well, but this nativity scene looks like two dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, oh, every, it's, it's no, a Jurassic. It. It's a Jurassic Christmas. Now I see it. it's like two weird, crazy hand puppets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, ah. and so, yeah. every time we drive by, this one like, great for radio. But yeah, they look yeah. like dinosaurs. Imagine the Tiffany scene with dinosaurs. We were yeah. Yeah. So, in the middle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're driving by as a family. And every time we drive by one of these, we could be in the middle of a conversation. We could have somebody else in the car that doesn't know. Just the whole family goes, raw <laughs> Every time. That's kind of like punch bug, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's I a, love it. I love it. I, I love that mindset. I love it. I think it, it falls right into the insanity of Christmas for me. I also feel personally like the, the nativity narrative is probably like the best cover up story for teen pregnancy, like for in the last Yes. Two millennia. It's just amazing. Yeah. Can't believe that story's still stuck, yeah. and it hasn't worked for anybody else. <laughs> well, it's great. Yeah. Hey, right. Any other comments on the uh, nativity scene or uh, insanity of it? Well, uh, I, I I appreciated the uh, the Church of Satan, uh, and wasn't it down in Texas where they they had uh, you know the government had put up 
uh, in front of the one of the official buildings they had put up a nativity scene, and the Church of Satan came along and put up a statue of Baphomet. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was very cool. It, it wow. certainly drew a lot of uh, drew a lot of attention. So the, uh, eventually, the, the government. Book, the government relented and uh, took the nativity scene down. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of iconography, uh, Sky, you had a story about the Christmas tree. Uh, I just had a comment uh, that I can't give a citation for. I just know it's in the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah says that you should not decorate trees with silver and gold as the pagans do. And that kind of segues into the fact that I've got tons of notes you know, on Christmas, and it seems like just about everything about Christmas is pagan. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. dare calling Christianity hypocritical? <laughs> Let's start. Mm -hmm. I need it. I got to put you on the. I don't. I wouldn't go that far. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> so fine. Hey, Joe Pirate, what's up? It's uh, actually it's Jeremiah ten uh, verses one to five. Not bad. Thank you. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. There's Can I just come in there? Here. Yeah, go on, John. Because I, I did Global Atheist News yesterday, of course, and one of the hot items is about a bishop in Sicily, you know, the island off the bottom of Italy, it's the football. Who, who, who wanted to promote the Christian aspect of Christmas. So... What he actually did was denigrated Santa Claus. <laughs> he said it was a myth. <laughs> and and oh. the real thing, of course, he meant the real thing was Santa. Santa's not real? It, well, exactly. That's what happened. All the parents on their Facebook site came out and said, how dare you? Like, how dare you dash the 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 hopes and and wishes of my children who I've been indoctrinating with Santa Claus. And in the end, he had to, somebody Grenade. had to write it for him. Really? Robert That's Green great. says that Santa Claus is actually Odin. But he got a, I think that priest got a small glimmer of what it's like to be an atheist and try to talk about God, you know, yeah, for the first yeah, time yeah. in his life, probably. He's just like, oh, yeah. whoa, this is weird. Maybe I should have better evidence. He definitely why, don't you, why aren't you convinced with good evidence? There's a he lack did. of evidence. You shouldn't believe in this thing. Wait, what am I doing? He got a, no. he got a slapping anyway. <laughs> he got a slapping anyway. Anyway, praise be to Santa. Guys, yeah. we're going to go into a more extended topic. Dread Pirate, you want to talk about the Christmas story. Well, uh, I we attended a uh, online uh, series of lectures uh, hosted by Bart Ehrman, who is a uh, very well-known uh, New Testament scholar and historian. And so he touched on, you know, many of the things we, you know, consider the insanity of, of Christmas, including virgin birth. Um, and one of the more interesting things I learned right off the bat was about the fulfillment of prophecy um, that uh, I believe is in Matthew, uh, where he spends, a, the author spends a great deal. Of course, it wasn't Matthew that wrote this. It was probably 70 years after uh, Jesus was around. But it uh, goes into great detail about the genealogy and the lineage uh, from Abraham down through the house of David, and that uh, Joseph is the uh, direct descendant uh, through that, through that genealogical line. But uh, of course it's not lost on historians and other people who regard this with a little more skepticism that Joseph was not Jesus's father. father. Wow. God was. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it kind of it, it throws a, a pretty significant wrench into the, uh, the whole uh, Christian cogwheel there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that's certainly not the least of issues. Uh, the virgin birth, as someone, I think John pointed out, uh, it's not the first time that, uh, you know, teen, teen pregnancy um, has had a story to, uh, to you know, kind of cover it up. Man, and, 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 interesting, yeah, and interesting enough, virgin births or claims of virgin birth continue to happen. Yep. Even right up to to this day. And I'm sure, sure uh, when I was watching Bart Ehrman, and this was maybe two weeks ago, um, something at uh, one of these virgin birth claims had just actually recently been made. Um, so it's, yeah, it's not the first time and it certainly won't be the last. 
and resurrection and just miracle after miracle yep. the, yep. all these yep. different kinds of cults that are around the world <laughs> and some people even claiming to be jesus christ himself come back mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is a great, oh, there's a great documentary called No Men Beyond This Point that is fairly recent. I think it's a 2020 movie that came out on Amazon. It's a documentary yeah. about uh, alternate reality. So it's, it's still fictional, but it's filmed as if it's a documentary where women now only give virgin births. So like the only propagation of humanity is by women just giving virgin births only. And they cite in the movie claims of virgin births since Mary all the way up until like the 1950s and people weren't giving them enough credit until now all the women are doing it. And then all of society basically turns upside down because all the men have to be put into like tiny little camps where they can play video games and talk about how to barbecue the right kind of food. <laughs> oh. And women will run the world because they don't need the men anymore. Right, and it's the right. most funnest thing because like one of the men <laughs> want to escape and he's just like, this world's so different. Everything, there's too many options for pants and their pockets aren't big enough. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, it's a fun, it's a fun, dumb movie, well, what's the name of it no men beyond this point um i believe okay. it could even be a canadian movie dread i would highly recommend <laughs> you check it out uh, of, course, of course if there was such a thing as virgin birth it would only be daughters that were produced right like, like parthenogenesis yes yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. oh so no jesus no exactly <laughs> well it could be a female jesus i mean joanna or somebody <laughs> Yeah. You know, the weird thing about the whole virgin birth situation that bothers me personally is that, uh, it tends to, unless if you have some way of randomizing DNA, right, you're, you're still stuck with what uh, essentially the sequence that you pull from the mom when, because even mm -hmm. her, even her mitochondrial DNA is going to be pulled from her line. And mm -hmm. that doesn't give us enough variation to what I think kept us alive just by the fact that when you combine DNA, you get like a really weird combination that might give you some advantages, may not give you some advantages, but more often than not, keeps the variation long enough that any cataclysmic event won't kill all of us at once. And I feel like that's been the testament, this trial and error that we've had through the natural birth that we've been having. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I know in the future we'll be able to, to probably design people better, but like, I am an advocate of like this naturalistic system that got us to this point. I will say that. Um, I'm also going to throw this out too. The, the scariest thing for me about the virgin birth situation is that for Jesus to be a male, as you had pointed out, John Richards, and for him to be an actual human being, full, full on normal human being, as he quotes himself to be and claims to be, he needs to have DNA from uh, a, a partner, which means that DNA had to come from God, which means mm -hmm. God has to have a genotype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if God has a genotype, how disappointing must <laughs> uh, be this and, guy. And, and oh, God's, God's genotype must include a Y chromosome too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John's or it must have included a nice pair of abs that everyone keeps playing. Uh. <laughs> but like if if Jesus did look in fact the way how he purported to be by the Catholic Church as like a very oddly Italian looking man in Mesopotamian bronze era, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that God has all these features because now it's pretty easy to indicate what God looks like. And that's a very disappointing person in terms of like looks. It's not it's not at all. It, it sucks that you can that enough that, that we came up with that story and didn't think about the consequences of the science and backtracking it when we had a better understanding mm. of it. It strikes me as a story that we came up with with not a very good understanding of genetics, mm. and it yeah, reeks of it. Sure. Unfortunately, also, yeah. Larry, what's up? Oh, you're Sorry on my about friend. the mute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to throw a couple of things out there but, that I observed about uh, the insanity of the Christmas story itself. Um, and the, just the sheer rudeness of God. He uh, he didn't ask Eve, I mean, not Eve, but uh, Mary, Mary, if she wanted to have the kid. Yeah. Uh, when it was time to tell her that she was going to be pregnant, he didn't do it himself. He sent a messenger boy. Oh, he, he, did, he didn't show up at the birth. And he didn't show up at the death. And he didn't he's pay like any a, child support. Yeah. yeah. He's like a dead end dad, you know, no. kind of thing. <laughs> and it's totally impersonal. Uh, and Worst dead end dad possible. Yeah. Virgin birth, uh, you know, uh, Eve, for all intents and purposes, uh, was not born of a woman. And she should have been a clone. If, I mean, if he, if he made her from the rib of a man, 
Eve why wasn't been. she a man? She should have mm-hmm. just been a clone of the man. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of a lot of problems with these stories if you take even two seconds to think about them. Yeah. Um, hey, go, Dred. Yeah, I was uh, one of the things that uh, Bart had pointed out too was the um, the incongruity between um, this idea of virgin birth and in another gospel, um, Mary chiding Jesus for uh, presuming to teach in the temple. If, you know, if it was her understanding that she was having uh, the child of God, um, she would have known, of course, that ah. he's more than qualified to, to <laughs> teach point. in the temple. Good yeah, point. well, it's, it's, it's actually, like, did you it's, it's a pretty glaring thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. What's going on here? Like, I'm pretty qualified, mom. Thank you. It's like, hey, George, yeah. what's up? That's a great one. That's a great well, one. I, yeah. I have a question, mm-hmm. and I don't know if we'll be able to answer it, but let me throw it out there. Is there any difference between the way the Catholics um, celebrate or view this story and the way the Protestants do? Not that much. I think the most yeah. difference between Catholicism and Protestantism is just structure of the church and, and who's the authorities. But the uh, Yeah, and what you're allowed and not allowed to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. And and of course, it's bifurcated a lot. Yeah. yeah, and it's bifurcated the, a lot, in, but it's one of the biggest the same. differences between the Protestant and Catholic is that Catholic want to read the Bible and tell you what it means. <laughs> Protestants encourage you to read the Bible for yourself. Right. Uh, that was the whole thing about the Reformation. Pujo was actually raised Catholic. What's up? Uh, I did want to quickly point out um, to Sky. Sky, if you just put your hand up, um, you, you'll have an easier time to interject because I hear you trying oh, to say okay. things, and it's hard to hard to hear. Um, but uh, but yeah, and to me, the Catholicism the one the one thing that blows my mind talking about insanity is um, transubstantiation, where you're mm, right. you're literally eating the body of Christ, and that yeah. oh, that's yeah. a great one. R- ritual cannibalism. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not just on Christmas. You do that like almost every yeah, other week. Every Sunday. Mm-hmm. If you got a good church, yeah, they yeah. always have the grape juice ready. I will throw this out. Here's my crazy one. Um, the fact that we don't appreciate Joseph, I think that's the stepdad of Ooh. Jesus, as Ooh. a good father figure, because here's a guy could have just done whatever he wanted. It's like, oh, you're pregnant. I don't want to deal with that. I literally can get stoned for stuff like that. He's like, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. I'm going to step up. I'm going to still be your friend. I'm going to make sure you're warm. I'm going to make sure I'm going to be there at the birth. And I'm going to teach this kid useful traits that he'll need for a career because I'm a carpenter. I'm going to teach this kid and make a chair. Okay, he's not good at making chairs. That's totally fine. We're going to work with this kid. Okay, he's preaching. He talks a lot. I'll, I'll get him out of the trouble. He's always there trying to get Jesus out of trouble. And Jesus is always like, I'm going to die on a cross one day. And Jesus is like, you're going to make your mom cry. Can we please just like calm it down a little bit? Best father. <laughs> best father. Like one of the best fathers in the book. Better than God. I'd say that. Uh, let's see. Who's next? George, what's he up? He showed up anyway. He showed up. Okay. That's right. um, um, I've been thinking about the emasculate the emasculation of men uh, originating in the Catholic Church. So the word father is an, is interesting because Father God usurps the role of men when we refer to God as our Heavenly Father, our Father. Um, We refer to the priests in Catholicism as Father. That tends to diminish the role of an authentic Father. Mm. And 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 Jewish people, they say Father. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know what Jewish people you know, but... (laughs) Let's leave it to the last words. Dred, what's what's your last words on this topic? Um, Free thought. I, I was going to say that uh, one one thing that was pointed out as well was that uh, uh, Joseph, in all likelihood, was uh, you know the age of a great grandfather, and mm-hmm. uh, and Mary was likely around thirteen. Whoa, oh. that probably makes sense. Got to be honest with you, yeah. John. Tell us about this thing you want to plug. <laughs> well, before I do that, I want to. I want to refer to a meme where there's Mary and she's cradling the baby Jesus and she's trying to get it, get her head around the fact that the father and the son are the same. And who did I, who did I 
Who was I impregnated by? Uh, <laughs> all right, that's a dark oh. note. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> That's hilarious. John, so, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to plug is Free Thought City. It's a new social media site. It's civil. It's got a, a city that you can visit with your friends, meet new people, and it's time zone so that you can come out of the virtual world into IRL, you know, in real life, and meet up the people that you you met there here. If you see what I mean, and <laughs> and and it's. So go to it. It's got a Kickstarter now. Freethought.city slash Kickstarter. Nice. And all sorts of videos on there. And we're doing a campaign. So tomorrow I'm going to launch a song. I think the modern term is drop a song. Yep. And it's written by, the lyrics are written by Richard Dawkins. So oh, yeah. look out for that. There will be, there will be what's something the U- happening what's every the day. URL? What's the URL? Freethought.city slash Kickstarter. And no dot com or anything? Doesn't need that. No, it'll go straight there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dot city is a new one to me. Fujo, anything you want to check out? Anything we should check out before uh, next year or next week? Um, got too excited. Really? You, you can check out behind me where the kids uh, made a tent last night. Uh, <laughs> You're always making tents and forts. I love it. I love it. Love it. No, I, I guess I don't really have anything, uh, um, guys, except uh, give all that org. Uh, I think I plugged give. it before. It's a great, a, a great uh, organization that really focuses on what uh, charities do the most good. So you're not, you know, just giving some, I don't know, goodwill, goodwill CFO. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah bigger bigger jet um, but it. really <clears throat> vetted vetted charities good goodwill uh givewell.org givewell.org dread pirate is there anything that we should check out before next week yeah i, I just want to we've got a couple uh, live watchers on the show here um dadas trading room he's he's always watching he's uh, talking about a film called seskmija it's a polish film s e k s m i s j a um, they have some different Christmas traditions that uh, some people might find interesting. Um, so check that out. And Loma says retcon. I don't know what that means, R-E-T-C-O-N. But you can check this show out live on Sundays on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate. That's M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. I uh, broadcast this live at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come check me out. And if you like it, please subscribe. I'm still at 98. No oh, man. <laughs> Sky, anything that you would recommend we check out before next week? Not really. Okay. Yeah, fair I enough. Think of a single thing. George, same question. Anything we should check out before next week? No. Fair enough. Guys, <laughs> listen, it's holidays, and um, there's going to be animals that won't be adopted during this time because people won't be looking for your adoptions at this time, which means dogs will be in kennels and cats that could be adopted or friendlier uh, won't have anyone to play with or humanize themselves to. And so if you are nearby an animal shelter and you have time over the holiday season, I'd recommend checking out volunteer work, see if you can walk some dogs and shed some love. Money is always useful, but personal time with animals means more to an animal than dollars. I I think if you can afford to give that time, it'd be really, really nice. Hey buddy, I hear you too. Also, this is a rescue (laughs) animal too. Here's Vinny. Yeah, he's so good. Such a nice cat. Mm Larry, why don't you take us out? Uh, if you had, if you had to have anything else, well, sure. My own content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to go there and click the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on this subject. I have a book out on atheism called "Atheism: What It's All About." It's available on Amazon, and you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter Five or Larry Rhodes. If you have any questions for the show. You can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we can answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and many people do, you can get help by going to recoveringfromreligion.org. I highly recommend it. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and Podcast everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Merry bye, Christmas. man. <laughs>